The once stayed and intractable payment process in the U.S. has gotten a royal kick in the you-know-what what over the last few years, and it looks like it will continue in the near future. We're joined today by Notch's very own Rob Unger to share some light on some of the changes and trends that will impact the payment process at virtually every organization, including yours. Make sure you stick around until the end when we take a look at some frauds and we discuss what's going on there. Hey guys, I'm Mary Schaefer, founder of AP Now, and I'm joined by Notch's Rob Unger. And Rob, let's dive into my favorite topic, not really, um, paper checks. So are we going to get rid of them soon? I don't think there's a lot of good news on checks, Mary. But when, when you look at uh, national trends, um, there's a recent study out from uh, Bank of New York Mellon and, and ITA mm -hmm. talking about you know some of the traditional payment systems are certainly key and critical. You think about ACH, some people call it EFT, but uh, mm -hmm. automated clearinghouse network. Uh, there's some greater use of, of emerging payments. When we, when we talk about emerging payments, you think of the clearinghouses, real-time payments, you think of Zelle, uh, you think of a crypto a little bit. So there, there's definitely some use of emerging payments. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, checks are, are still around, but I think there's, there's really good news. There's another study that the uh, Association for Financial Professionals put out. They, they do a, a study on mm -hmm. payment trends of, of their membership, which are a lot of you know, bigger corporations typically. Mm -hmm. And they find that uh, overall volume of checks has decreased since 2019. In 2019, it was 42% of overall volume in, in their membership uh, payment volume was checks. Now it's 33%. So oh. uh, in a couple of years there, uh, you got that 9% uh, decrease, maybe driven in part, of course, by efficiencies and technology, but maybe also COVID, uh, where you know it's much more difficult to do, to do check processing. Yep. So, Yep. I think there's some good news there. You know, it, it, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> we talked about this before. I think and it was... Many maybe, times. <laughs> yeah, I think it was maybe 2006, the volume of consumer electronic payments passed check payments. So it's, you know... Taking us a little bit of time. Later, uh, business has caught up, and certainly I think uh, business is catching on to the trend. I know at Nacho, We've seen tremendous increase in volume of uh, B2B ACH payments. Uh, B2B ACH payments increased 12.3% this quarter compared to last quarter. That's yep. a pretty big increase. That represents, uh, you know, $20 trillion. That's with the T. So that's a, that's a lot of business-to-business -business payments. Mm -hmm. Spurred again by, I think, uh, efficiencies, easier technology, spurred by COVID as well as some new features uh, with respect to uh, same-day ACH, which I know we're going to talk about a little bit later. Yep. So, yeah, I think uh, checks are still there. You, you mentioned uh, being, being in England, and they were sort of shaking their heads about that. Yeah, but, they're like, uh, what are you people doing? <laughs> we, we see, I, I, I would even call it maybe a, a precipitous drop in, in overall yeah. Yeah, in checks. Yeah, yep. So, Rob, I mean, I've, we've known each other for a long time, but I'm not sure all our audience um, knows um, about Nacha. So maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about Nacha. Uh, but also, um, Nacha's had some re changes recently. Um, I remember when the same day ACH first came out, it was the first change to the U.S. banking system in, I think, 40 years. So maybe you could tell us about Nacha and also some of the changes that you've seen in the last few years. Sure. Well, uh, NACHA, the National Automated Clearinghouse Association, we are the nonprofit governing body for the Automated Clearinghouse Network. Now, your members probably know uh, ACH payments, uh, if they've ever, ever been paid by direct deposit, that's a, uh, a, mm -hmm. an ACH payment or ever had any funds taken out of their checking account for a mortgage or, or a car payment. So it's a banking infrastructure payment network. All 10,000 plus, you know, banks, credit unions are connected to the ACH and able to provide the uh, interoperability of payments for direct deposit payments, mm -hmm. automatic withdrawals, business to business payments, probably some, I don't know, 30, 40 billion transactions a year, mm -hmm. payments a year uh, flow, through the, flow through the network, $70 trillion with a T. So it, it, it's a big, it's a big payment network and not just main responsibility is to provide the governance. So our rules, the NACHA operating rules, 
define the uh, roles, the warranties, the data formats, uh, and, and everything that, that, that enables and provides for that interoperability of payments, whether we're talking about direct deposit or, or tax payments or, or, or B2B payments. So we define the rules and enforce the rules. We provide education on the rules. And uh, we also have software that we've uh, developed as well to help people with things like account validation and, and that sort of thing. So that, that's NACHA. And you're right. So um, our rules impact uh, primarily all the banks and the payment processors, but by association, impact your members who are making ACH or maybe they call it EFT payments. So a few things to be, be aware of on, on the horizon here. One is uh, several years back, we made possible the ability to do what we call same day ACH. Mm -hmm. So ACH was typically, you know, a one day uh, time frame. You instruct your payment processor or bank to make a payment and then that payment would be settled tomorrow. But now, uh, if you're, once you're able to make uh, certain windows, uh, the payment sent today can be received today. It's not instant, instantaneous, uh, you know, seconds or minutes like a wire payment, but certainly within several hours, a payment sent today to someone can be, re can be received today. And the journey for same day ACH, uh, we made a lot of things better. The newest development is that the limit, the maximum limit now for same day ACH is $1 million. So formally, it was $100,000 and it started as $25,000. So those, those uh, caps have certainly uh, increased. So you can send the same day ACH up to a million dollars, you know, certainly for a lot cheaper than you could a wire payment. You know, you're talking. You know, a little bit of money versus you know thirty, forty, fifty dollars, whatever your, your bank might charge for that wire payment. So, uh, same day ACH, a great opportunity, and, and continues to improve not only with the ceiling limits being increased, but also with the availability of different windows throughout the day to send the send it. So, certainly talk to your your payment processor or your bank about the opportunities there for same day ACH in those instances where you need to send a payment real quick. But the, the traditional ACH with next day settlement is still, is that used more than same day ACH? Yes, yes, that, that's okay. still the predominant payment. Um, okay. The company doesn't call it this, but, but I like to call it like classic ACH. You know, you have like new Coke and classic Coke. Yeah. So, so classic <laughs> ACH is certainly uh, a, a primary payment choice and, and available and, and works quite well for, for most use cases, right? Yeah. So the ACH is where it yeah, needs to get there timely and, and, and quickly. Uh, another rule is what we call the, the micro entry rule. Mm -hmm. So maybe some of your customers uh, take advantage of micro deposits to do a cap validation. And so in this scenario, when you're trying to do uh, validate someone that they, they own the account, usually it, it involves a, a penny deposit or two that has to be confirmed before some kind of enrollment or, or a payment can be, can be completed. So there's a new rule that says uh, users of micro entries must now, uh, uh, must now um, at, at least, you know, do reasonable fraudulent detection. What does that mean? It means, you know, you have to have a fraudulent detection system so that you know these micro entries are, are not fraudulent. Uh, the, yeah, the rules in the natural rules, we, we tend to not be prescriptive in terms of you have to do A, B, and C, but but broadly uh, define that. So very important for any of your your folks who might do uh, might might make use of micro entry deposits if they have commercial mm -hmm. people closure yep. protection systems in place, and that could be either within their own companies or with their payment processor or, or with their bank. Um, there's another one that uh, really only impacts maybe some of your, your bigger members, Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, and by bigger members, I mean people who are doing maybe a couple billion transactions a year, payments a year okay. to, to ECH. But uh, this is certainly, I think, a, a best practice. We have what's called a supplemental data security rule that, that's uh, now enacted. And what that means is if you have routing and account numbers stored electronically, uh, they have to be rendered unreadable. So this includes anywhere from, you know, uh, I know you're on AP, but, you know, especially for uh, folks who might be scanning uh, mm -hmm. invoices, you know, the, the, that information uh, is considered stored electronically. 
that should be rendered uh, unreadable, as well as you know vendor master files and, and, and that sort of thing. Again, okay. it, it applies to companies that are doing, I think, you know, more than two million transactions a year. But I think it's the best practice uh, as we as we and later on we're going to talk about fraud. Yeah. So you know, certainly uh, inside of fraud. Yep. It be uh, or, or if your system mm-hmm. is hacked. You know, if that data is unreadable, that's certainly a, a, precaution, a precaution and a best practice. Okay, so those are, those are some new things going on with the, with the matching rules. So you've already kind of mentioned or alluded to. Maybe you could talk a little bit um, about what it would mean for our community, the B two B community. Um, these instant and real time payments, uh, like Zelle, Venmo, and things like that. We're just starting to see them creep in. Yeah, you know, there's. It's a little complicated, mm-hmm. so I'd like to just step back and give a broader overview of, you know, what, what these uh, what, what these payments are, um, and uh, yeah, because I'm certainly I'm sure a lot of folks are are hearing about this and, and what does it mean and what are the options. So mm-hmm. first, I'd like to talk uh, initially about what is a payment system. Mm-hmm. So a payment system has governance. When you think about the ACH network, Notch is the governance. It has uh, an operational feature. So there are two uh, ACH operators, if you will, in, in the ACH network. One is the Federal Reserve, and the other is the uh, New York Clearinghouse. So they're the ones that switch all the transactions. So you, you, you've got rules and, and you've got infrastructure, which basically make up a payment network. So when you talk about how do we move payments faster, all payment types are moving faster. I know we don't like to. Uh, extol any benefits of checks, but you know, 15, 20 years ago, uh, checks were uh, picked up at a bank, driven to an airport, yep. put on an airplane, and flown to one of the uh, yep. ferry houses. Uh, there's only one left now in, in Cleveland, but you know, they had, they had their own airports, and they would fly in and fly out, and, and checks would go around. And so, there were a couple of innovations. Uh, developed uh, a number of years ago related to check processing. One was actually the, the ability to uh, convert checks. We call it, in, in, in Nacha parlance, it, it, there's, a, there's a term called accounts receivable conversion. So people may have seen this where you write a check, to, to, for example, to pay your AT&T phone bill. Well, AT&T did not take that check and process it you know, through the, through the Federal Reserve. They converted it to an ACH transaction, right? Another rule that came out was Check 21, which allowed images to essentially take the place of physical checks so the checks could be processed uh, electronically. So, you know, checks have, checks have gotten better. Uh, I wouldn't call it a faster payment, but there, there's certainly a, a big movement to um, under the general heading of faster payment. So when I think of, uh, this, this is going to be interesting for people who live in different parts of the country, but um, there's a generic term, soda or pop. You know, depending on what, and then you've got, you know, Coke and Pepsi and Mountain Dew, right? So under the general heading, uh, I, I think I like to refer to it as faster payments. And then underneath, what are the different kinds of faster payments? So we talked about uh, same-day ECH. That's certainly a faster payment. can be sent and received on the same day. That's a faster payment. Um, the Clearinghouse, which is one of the ACH operators, developed a... Uh, 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 a faster payment network called real-time payments RTP. Again, so what's the infrastructure of that is you know that runs through the New York Clearinghouse. They develop the rules. That, that's a payment system. The Federal Reserve is coming out with a competing and similar uh, clearing network called uh, Fed Now, which will do the same thing. It'll it'll send payments you know kind of instantaneously. And they're going to be responsible for the rules there. You've got other ways to do uh, faster payments. People may, be, may, have, may have heard of sale. It's uh, a, a payment option uh, put out by the um, uh, early warning systems and, and owned by the banks for, for instant transfers. So again, that, that's, a, that's yet another piece of infrastructure, meaning they've got their own rules and they've got their own actual infrastructure for, for moving transactions. The card networks have options. You think about, uh, I think it's called Visa, MasterCard Send, and, and Visa Direct. I can't remember. I think those are, those are the names. 
where they can push, you know, faster payment, instant payments to a, to, to a card. So in this landscape of faster payments, what I was just trying to do is articulate that you've got different uh, bodies that, that are responsible for the infrastructure, different bodies that are responsible for the governance of those networks, but those are all different options and depending upon the needs of, of, of your members, you know, you may use one or several different options, but I just wanted to uh, articulate the differences there between between the different options with respect to who runs them, who operates them, who, who governs them, uh, and uh, yeah, just, uh, and, and there's probably more, but uh, those, those are the ones I can think of at the moment. Well, I know Fe uh, the Fed has come out and said Fed now will be live in, um, I believe, May, May 2023. But if I understand it correctly, and if I don't, you should correct me. I, I, that is, FedNow will deal with the banks, and then the banks will have their own uh, products for the individual consumers and companies. Is that correct? Yeah, but most of these, yeah. So FedNow, same-day ACH, real-time payments are all separate products, if you will, that are made available right. to the banks. And then the banks or different payment processors make it available to the companies. Okay. So we should continue to see a lot of change in the next few years um, as how businesses can pay their bills. Yeah, it'll be faster and, you know, there'll, there'll be a, a lot of options as well. Okay. Is, we think it's, you know, very, very good option. So. <laughs> so I'm not so sure how happy people will be about faster if they're the ones making the payment. I know people getting the payment will be happier. Yeah, everybody, you know, your, your counterparts, the accounts receivable folks, love faster payments. And, you know, that, that's really, that, that's one of the, uh, I don't know, gotchas, I guess, in, in these whole payment schemes. You know, who wants to pay faster? Uh, you know, are they just going to wait till you know, even closer to the deadline to send the payment because they have these options now? But there are a lot of factors in terms of, you know, need and, and immediacy of the payment and cost that will determine what, what payment types are, are going to be used. So, you know, as you were talking, I was I was remembering back a million years ago when uh, having visited a bank lockbox um, operation where they had those big machines and the checks would go through. <laughs> and then it occurred to me, what happens to our paper checks? I mean, I actually do write a few occasionally. Yeah, so right now, um, probably one of several things. Um, if you write a check, for example, uh, at um, you know Party City, you're buying some balloons and you write a check. They're going to they're going to convert it to an ACH payment right at the cash register. So they're going to scan the microline and they're going to hand it back to you. So you can write right. that check after that. Uh, other times, um, companies will. Uh, convert it into an ACH transaction. So rather than sending it to the banking system, they'll, they'll receive it in the lockbox, convert it to an ACH transaction, so they'll, they'll, they'll destroy that check. Other companies may image that check, but uh, for the most part, checks are no longer flying around the country and typically being no. destroyed right. uh, by the recipient. The only checks that are flying around the, co the country, and I think you are in the same boat as I am, or maybe not, are the ones I give my kids. <laughs> and they're happy to get them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Before we get to fraud, and we do want to uh, talk about fraud, um, if you like this episode, please give us a, a thumbs up. And if you loved it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We produce new content for this channel three times a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays are devoted to payment and accounts payable issues. And Saturdays are reserved for Wordle. Your thumbs up and comments help us as YouTube takes this as a signal to distribute this video to more viewers. And I have to tell you, um, the last one that Rob did for us was very popular. Just saying. <laughs> okay, so let, let's talk about fraud. Um, I don't know if there's more fraud, but it seems to me we hear about it a lot more than we used to. Yeah, it's top of mind with everybody. Um, you know. Uh, I've heard speakers talk about fraud and says, you know, it's just a matter of time when you're going to become a victim. It's going to happen. You know, there's, there's so many tentacles out there. Uh, you know, fraudsters have come a long way from the Nigerian prince email. Uh, so, uh, yeah, schemes are getting better all the time, and it's, it's definitely good to be vigilant. 
you know, you mentioned internal fraud, and we're not going to talk about it that much. But it it just uh, I'm amazed because I, I read these stories over and over and over again. It's the same story, you know, the long term trusted employee, the mm -hmm. controller, the bookkeeper, somebody like that, and they have no appropriate separation of duties. They have, get the they can write the checks. They get the um, uh, they get the uh, when the bank sends the statement, the statement goes back to the same person. They're submitting phony invoices. I mean, not really sophisticated frauds, but um, kind of, I don't know, basic frauds. And it's happening over and over again. Um, in one one case, um, I, it was it was the fruitcake fraud. There's a, a movie about it. And I was watching it with my husband and I kept saying, where are their auditors? Where are the auditors? Well, they had auditors, and the auditors were giving the controller the, um, the the statements and their analysis of what needed to be fixed. And he was the guy committing the fraud. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Mary, what, what you bring up is a great example because failure to do right exposes you to to risk and fraud, and, and fraud works because people fail to do right. And what I mean by that is. So you pointed out some very critical internal controls. Right. Operation of duties. You should, uh, yeah, at least daily reconciliations. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it, it, if you're not following internal controls, you're increasing your risk. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talked about, um, you know, kind of making uh, account data un unreadable. You've got internal controls. Mm -hmm. you know, You've got to do the right thing in the first place, and you're really going to lessen your, your risk, yeah. uh, regardless of the different kinds of fraud attempts. You need to become uh, aware. I know, you know, like a lot of companies, you know, we, we do a lot of training on, on how do you recognize fraud. If, if you see an right. email come in, you, you hover over and you look at the link, look for misspellings. Right. You know, if things seem odd, you know, check it out first. Yeah. Uh, do out of right. band verifications. I mean. You know, uh, it's a combination of awareness and doing the, the best practices to reduce risk that are really going to help people minimize the, the you know, yep. problems. I know a few companies, people have told me, uh, will send out phony emails to see if their employees will fall for it <laughs> my son's company actually he did that and i was like i was oh, yeah, praying yeah. as he's telling me that yeah yeah and he said no i i did i i recognized yeah. it <laughs> but yeah but it's i mean it's sad but that's 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 what we come to so when i think about this and i again internal fraud and we can move off of that it would seem to me that electronic payments would make it a little bit more difficult for an internal fraud to be committed because you actually have to have a bank account um, versus a paper check. Yeah, but you know, fraudsters have bank accounts, and they're, they're very good at you know scamming. You know, the, the business email compromise is a, is a big one where someone's impersonating the CEO or uh, the CFO, uh, or you know, the, they they somehow compromise um, the uh, the vendor master. Yeah, hey, I'm ABC supplier, and here's mm -hmm. my bank account number and routing yep. number and. You know, it, it's very important that you uh, verify that information before you act on it. And I know um, in a few cases where people actually fell for it, you know, the damage is the financial loss. I mean, without a doubt, that that, that that's a big issue. But um, in a few cases, people were fired, and that's because the company had put the processes in place, but the crooks were smart enough to wait till they knew people would be busy. And that's right. when they, and, and so people skipped it. But even if people weren't, if people weren't fired, there's that damage that it does to your uh, self-confidence in um, your professional, you know, ha how could I have fallen for this? Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't want to be in, in the headlines. You know, that, that's for sure. It's not a fun, fun place to be. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, have the systems in place, uh, ver verify the information. So, so important. Yeah. Yeah. I remember now this goes back a few years. One of the frauds, one of the first ones where they were pulling their stunts, where they were trying to get you to click on a link. They were sending things out supposedly from Nacha saying your ACH transaction has, has failed. And of course, if you stop and think about it, if your ACH transaction failed, that notice wouldn't come from Nacha. It would come from your bank. Yeah, yeah. Don't 
don't open any uh, females like that from that for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the latest one that I've seen, and it's just, you know, another innovation, it involves uh, criminals who are actually texting now. And of course, you have this sense of security when you get a text that, oh, they it should be somebody you know. Uh, and they're pretending to be the IRS trying to get uh, personal information. And uh, yeah, just with a critical eye, you, you, have to, you have to look at the, these things. Uh, if, it, it, if it seems odd, uh, it, 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 might, it might be odd. Uh, you know, if it walks like a duck, it might, it might be a duck. Right, right. <laughs> And just be suspicious. That's my new piece of advice to everybody. Be yeah, suspicious. Yeah, be, yeah, be, be vigilant. That, you know, it's part of the, the the awareness, right? Right. And you hate to be you hate to be like that, but that's the world we live in today. Mm -hmm. Oh well. So Rob was with us a while ago, as I mentioned, talking about real time payments. That talk was quite interesting and actually quite possible uh, popular. If you haven't watched it, you can watch it right now using the link that will appear momentarily on YouTube and is in the show notes below. We'll also display a link to a playlist of all these AP Appreciation Week talks. As always, we greatly appreciate your thumbs up, your subscribes, your shares, and your comments, and of course. Mr. Unger. Right.